in the Ark of the Covenant are the rules of the covenant. We're talking about the government of God. Yes. All these verses and commandments you read in Exodus 20, beginning with verse 3, mm -hmm. are in heaven. So if you're saying you with Christ in heaven, I'd like to, I'd like to let you know that these commandments are also with Christ in heaven. Hello everyone and welcome to TBP, the Biblical Perspective Channel. You are with us in, in these studies on the Great Controversy, which is a theme, and today's study is the foundation of God's government. You are joined with me and Pedro to do this study, and I'm looking forward to it. But before we go into it, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you're blessing us with to be here and to do this study. We invoke the power of your Spirit to guide our thoughts and our hearts, not only for us, but for the listeners. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pedro, for that prayer. Now, we're always talking about foundation, this foundation, that firm foundation, weak foundation, houses are built on a rock, on the sand. But we want to look at the foundation of God's, gov of God's government, Pedro. Now, I have a question for you, and it's found in Revelation 12, 17. And I'm going to read it for us, and then I would like you to explain what Revelation 12, 17 is all about. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So you remember we spoke about a war that broke out in heaven between yes. God and Satan in one of our previous studies. Yes. This text, that, that war is related in Revelation 12. Mm. And the text that you just read is a follow-up on that God created this being called Lucifer mm. and then he became an enemy of God he attacked God therefore he rebelled against God's government yes and he was no longer welcome within the setting where he was. So God expelled him from heaven and cast him out on the earth. Mm -hmm. This is what the text simply is saying. Oh, that's lovely. That was a nice, short, sweet explanation. In, in it, it mentions, it, ma it makes war with the remnant of her seed. Who is, the, who is the woman and her seed? And why is the keeping of the commandments of God as well as the faith of Jesus, the reason why they are targeted by Satan. The, you're asking why they are targeted oh, yeah. by Satan. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're looking at, you, you ask several questions in this question. Okay. So let me say this. What we're looking at here is the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. That means, to begin with, there is a message in the book that is given and needs to be understood but because it's called revelation yes now the book of revelation uses lots of symbolism to convey that message and this symbolism is crafted within the biblical context okay. that means whatever symbol is used in there you can find and identify what it stands for within the bible itself in this way this is a revelation you don't need to invent anything True. you just need to find out now what i want you to read for me is the book of Genesis in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and I will show you how this works oh lovely okay and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel now if you look and compare those two texts in Revelation 12, 17, you hear about yeah. a woman and you hear about the seed of a woman. 
and you also hear about a serpent yes. which in Revelation 12 you have all these elements you with me? Mm -hmm. You have the woman, you have the seed, you have the serpent. If you read the whole, not yes. necessarily in verse 17, but remember I told you 17 is a, a follow-up of that first part about the war in heaven. Okay. Okay. But in 17 itself, you find the woman. Mm -hmm. You find the serpent mm -hmm. or the dragon or Satan mm -hmm. and you also find the seed like in Genesis 3 315 yeah. now the difference is in Genesis 315 it is the seed of the woman who is involved in the war against the serpent and the seed of the woman crushes the head yeah. of the serpent. The difference now in Revelation 12, 17 is that it is the, the remnants, not the remnant. Mm. If you read the original, okay. the remnants of the seed of the woman who are involved in the controversy and the fight okay. in genesis 3 15 we identify the seed as jesus christ okay in revelation 12 17 the remnants of the seed mm -hmm. that means the followers okay. of christ are the one who are the target of the enemy the war between the seed mm -hmm. and the serpent has been won already. Okay. So now he he's focuses going after. on the remnants, the seeds, the followers yeah. of the seed. Are you with me? I am. Now, before you go out there, you mentioned that in the original, for the viewers, which original are you talking about? In the original language? You oh, say? in the original language, yes. if you check the word remnant, mm -hmm. if you read your King James uh, Bible, it says remnant. But if you look at the original, mm -hmm. it is plural. Mm -hmm. It's not one remnant. Okay. It's remnants that involves a number okay. beyond two. Oh, Are you with me? So, so it makes it clear it is the remnants that is the followers. If you have identified the seed as Jesus Christ, yeah. the, f the remnant Makes of sense. the seed are the followers of Christ. Well, that becomes clearer. Mm -hmm. I said the book is Revelation, so it needs to be understood. Yeah. That becomes clearer when you tap into what identifies the remnant. It says those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So those is a plural. Are you with me? Yeah. So it actually is clear even in the English when you keep on reading. Okay. You, does, that, does that make sense? Yes. So... What we see here in Revelation 12, 17 is that the notion of keeping the commandments of God mm -hmm. and having the faith of Jesus are identifying characteristics okay. of the remnant. Okay. In other words, in this conflict, it would seem from Revelation um, 12, 17 that the devil, Satan, mm -hmm. the dragon, the serpent, only worries about you. Mm -hmm. And things that you are an enemy of his, mm -hmm. if you have those two characteristics. Okay. That is, you keep the commandments of God and you have the faith of Jesus. That's the only time he worries about okay. you. If those characteristics are not there, he doesn't worry about you. Really? <laughs> well, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Because you were asking me why yeah. he was... Um, they were the target of his attacks. So okay. that's, that's what I'm saying. All right, then. So given that you've just said that, and that was a very good discourse, and I have taken it on board, and I'm going to look in the original. 
Why is it important for Christians to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus if those are the two things that the enemy is targeting? Very good question. Let's an analyze that question in the light of what okay. Jesus himself said. Mm -hmm. Jesus the seed. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to John chapter 15 and read verses 10 and 14 to begin with. Right. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command. So that's Jesus saying, and yes. he is very clear on what he is saying, talking to his disciples, yes. but also talking to the remnants yes. of the seed. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Now, let's read another text, which is John 14, verse 21. He that hath commandment, he that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So Jesus is clearly saying here to answer your question as to why is it so important for um, the, the remnants yes. to keep the commandment of God. Jesus is saying here that love for him and for the Father is expressed in keeping the commandments of God, mm -hmm. obeying his will yeah. as he himself did when he walked on this earth keeping the commandments yes. of his father and obeying the will of his father. Yeah. So this is Jesus himself making this point. Not me, not you, not anyone else. Mm. Are you with me? Yes. So would that be important Absolutely. an information to take in? Very much so. So in doing this, in keeping the commandments of God, in choosing to obey his uh, will mm. you are effectively choosing the side on which you are in this conflict mm. in this cosmic conflict and this is something that Satan cannot take mm. yeah if you're going to obey the the commandments of God if you're going to be faithful to the will of God if you're going to express your love for God by submitting to him mm. through keeping his commandments, you have absolute um, assurance. Yes, you have absolute assurance that the enemy mm. knows that you have chosen your side yeah. in this conflict and that's not him. Mm. Therefore, he will do everything he can in his power to oppose you yeah. and take you out of that now i want you to read again revelation 12 verse 17 for me please and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed and keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus Notice in this text that he is motivated by rage. Yes, wrath. Wrath. Mm. That's rage. Mm -hmm. Why would that be so? Let's allow the text or the Bible to answer itself. Okay. Read for me from Psalm 19, verses 7 to 11, please. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul... The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is my servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Beautiful. You see, this is Psalm yeah. 19 yes. that David is writing about 
the beauty of keeping the commandments yes. of God. This is a thousand years before Christ. Christ comes as read in John 14, in John 15, and he says, look, you express your place in the universe. Yes. By submitting to me or not, you take your proper place in the universe in the way you relate to my will and the will of my father. And that proper place is a place of love that is expressed by keeping yes. those commandments. Because in this text that you have just read, there, there, all the words that you have there mm. are about how effective, how good, how important how delightful how whatever good adjective that you can find the will of god is for humanity another text i want you to read for me is psalm 119 verses 142 and 172 please okay thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is truth 119172 my tongue shall speak of thy words for all thy commandments are righteousness okay righteousness yes, righteousness righteousness mm. and related to the commandments of god remember yes. we were talking about the government yes. of god now the last text i want you to read for me not the last text for that question the last before last I want you to read for me for that question is Exodus 34 verses 5 to 7, please. Okay. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. This is God speaking about himself yes. to Moses who said, show me your face. Yes. And he says, you can't, you can't see my face, but I can tell you what I'm about. Mm. So this is God displaying through words his character, therefore his image, projecting his image to Moses. Mm. And when he speaks about forgiving sins and iniquities unto a thousand generations and so on and so forth, well, if you think about it, sin and iniquity have to do with commandments. Mm -hmm. mm. Are you with me? Yes. So, keeping the commandments of God is in effect reflecting his character and his image mm -hmm. if you do it from a place of submission total submission to him yeah. are you with me mm. and this is what satan cannot stand bear yes. because you now are a little image yes. of God that he has to deal with every single day on the planet. He was cast out of heaven. That's right. He cannot see God's face anymore, but then he sees you every day. <laughs> and you are yes. reflecting the character of God. He cannot bear yes. that sight. Therefore, he has to do everything he can to stop the followers of Christ reflecting the image and the character of God when they keep his commandments. Yes, but it's understandable, Pedro, because to light and dark can't agree. So you can imagine you're reflecting his beauty and he's so angry with that beauty. Why wouldn't he attack us? So here is the reason why. He couldn't beat the seed. That's right. Therefore, he will go with rage yes. against the followers yes. or the remnant yes. of the seed. Okay. Now, I want you to read another text for me in Revelation 14, verses 6 to 12. Okay. Please. 
And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the shame shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Keeping the commandment of God yes. to answer your question, why is it so important, yes. is serious business. Absolutely. And keeping the commandment of God is part of a package yes. that comes from God along with other things. Mm -hmm. You have in this package worship, evangelism, yes. and condemnation of evil under any form mm -hmm. because evil is unto destruction. That's right. Satan must hate that and he must do everything he can to stop you from keeping the commandments. Yeah, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. And yes, Satan will do that. Pedro, what are the ways Satan is trying to stop the people from being on God's side. What are the ways Satan is trying to stop? Yeah, because you mentioned many. Okay, two things. All right. Two things in the time we have left. Mm -hmm. Read for me Revelation chapter 13, verses 7 and 8, please. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and the power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So I said two things. The first yeah. thing is mm. he tries to stop you. Uh, your question is yeah. to stop you being on, on God's side. Two things. The first thing is... He tries to make you, with all his power, he tries to make you an earth dweller. Right. So that you are consumed by the things of this life, okay. trying to make it down here. Okay. Therefore, not making God a priority in your life. And doing so you become a worshipper of him whether you know it or, no. or not mm. whether you are conscious of it or not and you place human mm -hmm. your person yeah. above the person of God the second thing because I said there were yeah. two the second thing is he tries to make you a follower of non-biblical Christianity. Wow. That's the second thing. Okay. So read for me, please. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 and 7, please. Okay. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, of you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How beating vain do they worship me, 
teaching the doctrines, the commandments of men. Trying to place you, okay. same thing, but differently. Now, you can care about the word, no problem. You can care about being a Christian, no problem. But let's not give the word of God the priority. Okay. So that's the same thing as the second one. Now, read for me again, Revelation, not Revelation, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Please. Okay. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So, historical Christianity has asserted his position yes. on the authority of the Word of God in the lives of Christians by placing their tradition above the will mm -hmm. and the authority and the commandments of God. All of that was already uh, clearly laid out in the Word of God. Yes. So, this to give you an example of that, this is exactly what happened with the Ten Commandments. When I say historical Christianity, okay. I am talking about the historical church that led Christianity for more than a thousand years. Okay. They made sure that they placed human tradition mm. above the Word of God. And an example of this is in the Ten Commandments. Um, so, uh, I want you to read a text for me. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 20, and then read verses 3 to 5, and then 7 to 11, please. Okay. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And 2711, thou shalt not make, take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You see, you read a series of commandments. I did. And I'm asking you, and you started with graven images and so on and so forth. How many Christians in Christianity care about these commandments? How many Christians in Christianity regard these commandments as applicable now? We often talk about Sabbath because we think that's the biggest thing mm. in the commandments that has been put under tradition. But what about taking the name of God in yeah. vain? What about worshipping idols? What about doing all these things? Mm. It's at the same level. Mm. Now, what you have in Christianity is people say, well, don't worry about it because now we are with Christ, you see. We are with Christ in heaven. Mm. Guess what? Read for me. Revelation 11 verse 19, please. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and this, and there was seen in his temple the ark of the testament, and there was lightning and voices and thunderings, and earthquake and great hail. You see, that is happening in heaven, in the temple in heaven, the Ark of the Covenant. What is in the Ark of the Covenant? Well, if you go back to Scripture, you will find out that in the Ark of the Covenant are the rules of the covenant. We're talking about the government of God. Yes. All these verses and commandments you read in Exodus 20, beginning with verse 3, mm -hmm. 
in heaven. So if you're saying you with Christ in heaven, I'd like to I'd like to let you know that these commandments are also with Christ in heaven. Fantastic study, Pedro. Thank you very much. And viewers, we look forward to you coming back with us next week for another study. And don't forget, we have a three o'clock appointment on Saturday where we are going to discuss further topics to do with the world and what we are discussing today. So I want to ask you to like, share and subscribe and give us a thumbs up because it tells others that we are doing a right thing for the gospel, proclaiming the true and living God. And I want to thank you once again. Take care. Have a good week and God bless.